Hi guys, welcome back. After we establish our prima facie case of discrimination, our employer has to articulate a legitimate non-discriminatory reason for whatever action they took against us. And the process encourages them to make something up if they need to. Because it doesn't require them to prove what they're saying, it just requires them to articulate it. Then it's on us to show that the reasons they gave are pretext. And that's legal speak for BS excuse. The most common pretext is when our employers make up conduct or performance issues and try to convince EEOC that that's why they did it, not because of our protected status. And again, they don't have to prove it, they just have to say it. Now, if you want to go into some detail about the types of pretext that employers use and how to fight back against it, I'll link in the description to a couple videos I made about it. Today, I just want to touch on one of the ways that our employer's pretext can actually help us. When I first encountered NASA's pretext, I expected it to be static. And by that, I mean I expected them to pick a story and stick with it. But it was almost like they had all these potential legitimate non-discriminatory reasons written down on little scraps of paper and they threw them all in a box and drew one out when they needed one. It seemed that random to me sometimes. Whatever they drew out of the box, that was their story now. Didn't really matter what they'd said before. And it went on that way my whole process. The pretext never stopped. And that also happened in some other cases that I'm going to share with you today. Over the course of my hearing alone, NASA spun three different pretextual stories. They tried to accommodate me but couldn't because I had such severe communication problems. They gave me every accommodation I asked for because I was a good employee. And they never accommodated me because I never requested accommodation. And they said this last one after the first two arguments where they had already admitted that I did request it. <laughs> That's why I say it was like they literally pulled their story out of a box blind. The constant flip-flopping was one of the most painful parts of my whole EEOC process because it seemed like no matter how often they changed their story and no matter how much they contradicted themselves, no one at EEOC was ever going to call them on it. And the constant changes also made gathering evidence much harder because I had to gather much more of it so that no matter how they changed their story in court, I'd have something that I could use to refute it. I wanted the extra security of having that documentation, even though I was pretty sure that their changing stories alone was enough to show EEOC that their stories were pretext. It was enough in cases like Velez v. Thermo King, where the employer's changing reasons for termination supported a finding that Thermo King's reasons were actually fabricated. In the city of Salem v. MCAT, where the court decided that weaknesses and plausibilities inconsistencies, incoherencies, or contradictions in the employer's proffered legitimate reasons for its actions were cause enough to doubt them. And there's also the case of Haddad versus Walmart, where several witnesses kept changing their stories. And in my case, NASA's constantly changing reasons gave my attorney plenty of opportunities to catch their witnesses being less than honest. When my attorney questioned them about their flip-flopping, that piqued my AJ's curiosity, and he became engaged with a bunch of questions of his own. And that's when I knew he was paying attention and giving me fair consideration. I know it can be frustrating when they're constantly changing their story and none of those stories are true. But when it happens, take a breath and know that that alone could cost them their case. But just in case, <laughs> go ahead and grab some documentation. See you guys in the next one. So then take care and hang in. Fight smart and hang in to win. Hey again, guys. This week's video ran a little short, so I thought I'd take a little while here to introduce you to a fun new resource that's also useful. SCOTUS Tunes. Daniel Meeks draws cartoons to accompany the oral arguments of significant cases before the Supreme Court. And there are a lot of discrimination cases there, so you guys might want to check it out. Have fun, and see you soon.